I'm Professor Julian Dowdswell, Director of the Scott Polar Research Institute in Cambridge University. The Institute is a national memorial to Scott and his four companions, uh, Wilson, Bowers, Oates and Evans, who died on their way back from the South Pole in 1912. Scott's first expedition, the British National Antarctic Expedition, took place some years earlier between 1901 and 1904. The painting I'm looking at is usually displayed in Dulwich College in London and it's called Discovery Passing the Royal Yacht on its way to the BAE 1901 to 1904. In the painting we can see the Discovery which is both square rigged and has a coal fired engine passing the Royal Yacht which is a paddle steamer at that time while leaving Britain in 1901 for the Antarctic. The Discovery Expedition spent several winters in Antarctica and was the first expedition to explore the interior of the continent with Scott, Wilson and Shackleton together exploring the Ross Ice Shelf and seeing the way up to the Polar Plateau via the Beardmore Glacier. Uh, the expedition was both one of exploration and one of science. It was arguably the first interdisciplinary scientific expedition to Antarctica and a model for expeditions and scientific work in Antarctica since that time. I'm looking at two other pictures today. One was taken a photograph of the end of the Discovery Expedition just before the Discovery itself broke out of its sea ice. The first is the Discovery still trapped in the sea ice in McMurdo Sound and two other vessels, the Terra Nova and the Morning, which came down on a relief expedition. And their first intention was to actually take the Discovery Party back aboard these two vessels, abandoning, abandoning the ship itself. The Discovery eventually, though, broke out of the ice and the three ships returned to the north in due course. The thing I like best about this photograph is it represents the most ships that had ever been grouped together at this time in Antarctica. The second photograph that I want to talk about is one that I took on a scientific expedition to the McMurdo Sound area of Antarctica almost a hundred years later. The view is from the Crary Laboratory in the McMurdo Sound base and in this photograph we can see five Hercules transport planes on the sea ice runway in McMurdo Sound. This represents, again today, the most aeroplanes that are usually gathered together in any one place in Antarctica. And what this shows is from the time of the Dulwich College painting uh, of the Discovery leaving Britain, through the Discovery Expedition, where we have three ships together in McMurdo Sound, to today, when we have often four or five Hercules transport planes and sometimes a C-17 Globemaster at the same time that McMurdo Sound has traditionally, right from the start of Antarctic exploration to today, been the hub for science in Antarctica. Not only a continent that is interesting in terms of science in its own right, but also that changes in the amount of ice on land on the Antarctic continent are a fundamentally important control on global sea level and therefore affect all of us who live in lower latitudes on the globe too.